Okay, so we just got back to New York City. I went out to Long Island today to see my cousins, and these are the type of cousins that, like, when you go to see them, you're actually excited to see them. They are extremely fun and funny and wild, uh, you know, so you never really know what's going to happen when you're there. Um, I'm sure everyone has some family like that, <laughs> and uh, we had a great time, but when you know, I was traveling, um, I made sure I had a really solid breakfast, uh, but there was a lot, lot of time traveling, and then when we went to the party, there was appetizers out, and the food, they had issues with the food because they're getting it delivered, so there was a really long stretch between breakfast and dinner, and I had really nothing to eat except for these appetizers, um, and they looked really good, so I ended up just like, eating way too much of these, you know, these kind of finger foods. And, um, you know, it's like one of those situations where you know the food's not that good for you, uh, but there's not really any other choice. So, you know, I overindulged and, you know, I don't feel the best right now. I feel like, you know, when you, when you overindulge on food that you know is not, you know, it tastes good when you eat it, but then afterwards you're just kind of like, I feel gross. That's how I feel. But look, you know, the reason I ha have a kind of routine with my eating during the week is like for these moments, because these moments are, you know, unavoidable at times. And, uh, it, you know, having one off day is not going to derail your progress for the, you know, the week or the month if you're following a structured routine. Um, now I don't plan around having cheat days cause you know, I don't think that's the, a, a good mentality to have. I think cheat days will just find you. Uh, at least they find me all the time. So it's just like, you know, I don't plan on it, but when it happens, it happens. Um, but, uh, you know, I don't regret it. And it's just, like I said, these are things that you just have to be aware of. Um, and if you have that structure during the week, then you can have these moments and still be okay and, and not stress it. So that's the way I think about nutrition. But the other thing I want to talk about is cravings. So something I realized about myself is, and I think a lot of my clients who I work with is like, you know, we have a good idea of like what's good food, what's bad food, right? To the general sense. But where I think the hard part comes into hand is when food cravings kick in. <clears throat> Excuse me. So what I noticed is, like today, I had a lot of, there was some cookies and things like that. I had some. But what I realized after I left is like my sugar cravings started kicking in again. Like having those like ultra processed sugary foods. And those typically linger for me for at least three or four days. So I know when I eat something that like is ultra processed, I typically crave it for a few days after. And... I think just being psychologically aware that when you do have these foods that like you have to be ultra aware that like there's going to be likely a few days of having these kind of like cravings that's going to want to bring you, suck you back into like these bad nutrition habits that you know aren't serving you. But it's because we're dealing with these, these it's like addiction, it's like a food addiction and, and a lot of these Foods that we're, are so ready and available to us, like when you're checking out at stores, like you see, you know, all the junk food and candy bars is like when you're checking out, you know, because they know that's a psychological game that these stores are playing with you because they know that you're going to try, they're going to try to get you to, to cave into your cravings. So, you know, I don't, I, it was interesting, like all week I didn't have any of these cravings, then I ate some of that sugary food and now it's like, at night now, I'm like, man, I want something sweet again. So the thing that I do, and I'm really strict about this, is keeping at least my home environment really clean. And like I have um, lots of frozen fruit, and sometimes I make like a, a frozen yogurt parfait, and I mix it up. I think I showed you that as like my first wall of defense when I have these sugar cravings because I know that it's better than having a you know candy bar or something like that. But look, if it gets to the point where I really do want it, you know, I'll just walk to the store and get it. And sometimes or most of the time for me, it's just the inconvenience of 
having to put on my shoes, it's cold out, having to walk 10 minutes, you know, it just makes me just kind of realize that I just want to be lazy and then just not go. And then by the time I wake up or at least 10 minutes later, you know, usually that craving has subsided or is gone. So um, that's something I just wanted to talk about because I think that there's a real problem with food addiction and especially in America because these companies, these big food companies are really trying to get us addicted. You know, their goal is that we have these cravings and we give in and spend more money and and um, I think that's a big problem. And it's almost like I think about the way I was even brought up. Think about the foods that we ate for breakfast. Like, I mean, I ate Cocoa Puffs, Lucky Charms, like just food that was crap. And then for lunch, I would have Lunchables. And in, in, look, I think at that time, you know, I don't blame my parents. I think that we just really didn't know. We just, we, we, I think we were just kind of unaware that how, it, we knew it probably wasn't great, but we didn't know how bad it was. But a lot of people at that sort of young age, you know, they can have it like these, these really bad habits kind of ingrained in them. And it's like a, you, it's like having, what's that word where it's like, you have like a flashback to a childhood memory and it makes you feel warm and good. I feel like a lot of the foods were purposely programmed for children to eat these like highly sugar intense ultra processed foods that kind of make us like be euphoric for having those those foods that we we know we don't we we shouldn't be eating now and um i think it's interesting just because like i said i think that there's like it was like a strategy for these companies to really just try to get us addicted young and I think that's why a lot of people suffer with obesity. I don't think the obe- I think a lot of the people that suffer with obesity kind of have an idea of what they should and shouldn't be eating. It's just they have really bad ad- addiction to some of these foods. And I think people can have addictions to anything. It could be alcohol, it could be drugs, and it could be eating. So, you know, that's something that I want to, you know, obviously, I know, I just want to put a little dent into that and at least bring awareness to, I think that, that is something where people struggle and um, at least even I struggle a little bit, but maybe having these sort of routines in place that, you know, that I do and, and if you don't know what to make, you can follow some of the recipes I make because while it may not be perfect, these are buffers to eating those foods that we know we want to stay away from and not have as like a regular routine or habit. But I think that's a whole other discussion for another time, talking about how these big food companies then I think almost have like a, almost like a mutual benefit with like big pharma where I feel like they both play off each other in a sense where the big food companies are creating the problem, the big pharma companies are creating the solution and they kind of go, they kind of help each other. They want to help people, but then they don't want to fix people because there's too much money to be made. So, you know, that's that's kind of, again, probably another discussion that we'll have. And I would be curious about your thoughts, how you feel about this, you know, the eating in America and ultra processed foods and what you think about it and what your opinion is and maybe how we can try to make a dent to help people that are struggling with this stuff. So, that's kind of my little rant tonight and I'll just keep this as like a short video. And uh, again, like I always want to say, if you have any other things that you want to hear from me on or interested in learning from me or just want me to share, let me know. I want to get your ideas. I want to help you the best I can and serve you. So that's it tonight. Have a great night and I will see you tomorrow.